Well, the economy is roaring as the midterm elections are officially underway. The unemployment rate, lowest level since 1969. Consumer confidence, highest level in 18 years. And wages are now growing at the fastest pace in a decade. Yet, if Democrats win today, the focus, I think, for the next few years will be dismantling capitalism. It's not just the upstarts in the party, but folks like Senator Mike Mark Warren, uh, who really has thrown down a gauntlet against American capitalism. It's coming like a locomotive. And I think big businesses in Wall Street, well, they seem oblivious or maybe just too arrogant to care. Joining me now to discuss the managing partner, founder of the Bonson Group, David Bonson, global economics editor for The Wall Street Journal, John Hilsenrath. Rick Unger has come back with us. All right, let me start with you, David. Uh, you know, Mark Warner saying, uh, you know, yesterday, American, uh, he denounced American capitalism. I don't believe modern American capitalism is working. Sounds like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And here's the thing. They're going to start acting on what they believe. Yeah, this is the one great thing people are missing is that it isn't just the far left of the party. We talk about Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren almost as characters of that. But they're pulling the center of the Democratic Party to the left. I think back to Cory Booker, who now talks like a member of the Sandinista wing of the party himself. Do you remember him defending private equity and defending Mitt Romney four or eight years ago during that, that yeah, election? I think he was getting $100 million from this company and a lot of donations from that one, all in that Wall Street area. But see, all of a sudden, and now he's been pulled all the way over. What they used to call centrists in the Democratic Party are being pulled the other way. And I think you're exactly right. That's what we'll see rhetorically out of them. I certainly don't think there's anything they'll be able to do legislatively around that front. But they're going to put a flag in the ground around the fact that their enthusiasm is with that Sandinista wing. And I use that term pejoratively, but I really do believe it. They're going right. that hard line far left, and they'll, they'll find out the hard way what the American people think about it. I mean, that. think about this for a moment, John. It it seems like this lay, this uh, election should be a layup, just with the stats I started the segment off with. So something is resonating. Something is stirring the American public uh, between a half and half knots. Yeah. Um, well, the economy is very strong. Uh, that's certainly the case. You know, Obama and Trump have both been on the campaign trail for the last few weeks, arguing that they deserve credit for it. We actually looked at this, and what we see is... Uh, both both sides get a little bit of credit. You know, the unemployment rate has been coming down from 10 percent since 2010. It's now 3.7 percent, but it's been a pretty steady decline. The economy is growing faster now than it was during Obama's years. But it's also the case that national debt is riding, rising faster than it was during the second term of the Obama presidency. So I don't think either side deserves full credit. But neither side right. deserves full blame. I mean, I would quibble with the unemployment rate. And if, if a trillion people drop out there, you know, if we had another four, four million people drop out the job market under Obama, we would have had a zero percent unemployment rate. But be that as it may, employment to population ratio for blacks through the roof. Better in two years under Trump than eight years under Obama. The, the quality of jobs has improved. 3.1 percent wage growth. But I don't know. I, you know, and I think business is going to have to figure this out because one day, Rick, uh, you get an airline saying, hey, we're going to ban plastic straws. And then the next day they raise the bag fees. <laughs> so yeah, they're going to have to figure true. this out. But, but I, I really got to sound a caution here because I honestly think you guys are overstating it. You know that I fit a centrist Democratic mold myself. When, when you listen to what the senator had to say, he is not rejecting capitalism in favor of a socialist agenda. I didn't say it was socialist. Right. There's all the alternatives. I think people believe there's something in the middle that we could be doing. Uh, I, actually, I'm glad you said that because I think where you're finding something some rejection is I think there are many, including me, who think that we have perverted what real capitalism was and should be in this country. I'm a great supporter of that of that premise because we've taken this turn where we have forgotten some of the real roots of capitalism. I'd love to see us get back to that. It'd be better for everybody. But don't think for a second that Democrats are going to become a socialist party. How, how, how does free trade fit in? On free trade capitalism? does absolutely fit in. I actually, I talk to Democrats. I think we're more free traders now. I don't than, think you're speaking Trump for young Democrats, honestly. I no, really I, don't. I, I, will, really I don't. will give you that. Uh, young, but you're I, not speaking for young blacks. You're but not you know what else? Young Hispanic, for 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 young you, but when you ask a young Democrat and say, what are you? And they say, Democrat, socialist. You go, really? What does that mean? And I don't think they know. Well, here's the problem. Well, I think they, they, they the can point act I... on it, though. That's, I, that, you know, I know that they're confused. 
And I, and I think, you know, we're looking around it right now. In Brazil, we saw a, an election people would have never predicted right. two years ago. Yeah. I mean, we're seeing major shifts in political attitudes around the world. No one thought Trump was going to win when he came down on that escalator. To suggest this can't happen, I think, is part of the problem. But I also think we make a big mistake to believe it's all in the political realm and not the cultural. There are things happening in the culture that are going to be addressed at a cultural level. Politics will follow. I don't think young people, by the way, love socialism, but I do think think they hate capitalism. And that's a huge that's problem. It hasn't I, been defended the right way to them. and They have not been educated on it. The school system has done them a disservice. We have to make the moral case for free markets. We're not making it. I agree. I, I, 